Angela Pate is the executive director of Florida Works, the workforce board for Alachua and Bradford counties. She has been in the workforce industry for over 10 years. She has a degree from the College of Architecture and Fine Arts from the University of Florida and pursued postgraduate studies in structural engineering and architectural studies at UF and the Georgia Institute of Technology. She also has a Master of Science degree in entrepreneurship from the University of Florida College of Business. She has served on several local boards, including the Alachua County Coalition for the Homeless and Hungry, the Downtown Redevelopment Advisory Board, and the Poverty Reduction Advisory Board. Ms. Pate also has over 25 years experience in architecture and construction industries and in software and hardware development. Welcome, Angela. Thank you. Good to see you again. I looked back, and I guess it was April of 2008 when we last mm -hmm. talked, and I I know you've been uh, quite busy uh, since then. I um, want to talk a little bit about these last two and a half years, but before we dive into that, for those folks who perhaps are not familiar with Florida Works or didn't see the first interview, mm -hmm. uh, can you give us just a, a broad overview of what Florida Works does? Sure. Florida Works is the Alachua Bradford Regional Workforce Board, and we serve the workforce development needs uh, and the business uh, needs for workforce in both Alachua and Bradford counties. And the board is 37 members of community leaders, public officials, um, college presidents, um, economic development leaders, plus the leaders of all of the social service agencies uh, focusing on different populations in the community. Mm -hmm. And 51 percent of the board are business owners. So it's a business driven board of directors who advise and create the policy for how our federal tax dollars are spent in investment into our community to train people and help people uh, become employed and most importantly to raise their skill levels to where our economy and our businesses require them to be in order to, to grow. And in this time when so much of the political discourse is all about jobs, all about employment. Yes, um, much different than two and a half years ago. That's right, and uh, and certainly that is that is your mission. You mentioned federal dollars. You're you're funded almost strictly by correct. federal. Is that correct? Mostly Department of Labor and Health and Human Services funds. And uh, tell me a little bit about what's been going on since April of 2008. Uh, <coughs> at that time. We always um, kind of characterize it by saying that if you could fog a mirror, we could get you a job. The demand was so high and the economy was so, um, you know, at a fevered pitch almost that we could not find the talent that we needed for the employer's needs. Mm -hmm. And our entire effort was focused on raising the skill levels of the people that were available to be hired. We have done a 180 from that uh, now after you know the recession of uh, of our lifetime many of us uh, and um, now we have a tremendously skilled out of work population mm -hmm. uh, w with PhDs masters bachelors uh, even MDs and JDs. Uh, as well as the entire spectrum of people at the lower ends of the educational scale. So the world is completely different for us. Um, we are now focusing on how to be creative with not only uh, training to help people get certifications and knowledge of emerging industries and areas that will be growth in the future, both short term and long term, but also focusing much more on working with our community partners in job creation. Mm -hmm. And that includes not just our economic development partners, but uh, the University of Florida. We are now working more much more closely with their um, resources there that are engaged in creating companies and jobs. 
their Office of Technology Licensing, their Entrepreneurship College, Engineering, things that are um, spurring new growth. And we're focusing on supporting those efforts and being engaged in those discussions much more than we were in the past. The Florida Back to Work program, yes. uh, I know that was funded by federal stimulus, stimulus dollars. It was <coughs> uh, through um, Health and Human Services. Those were TANF funds. TANF stands for Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, which are typically thought of as funds that pay uh, welfare um, participants or p fund the welfare system. And what we did was take that money and apply it uh, as did the, the rest of the state of Florida. Um, we did a great program in Florida to supplement um, salaries for employers who were unable to expand or grow because the economy was so bad that they um, didn't have funding, couldn't get loans for company growth or business growth. So we subsidized employment, literally paid salaries for people to be hired by those employers, which was an economic boon to the employer and uh, the job seeker. And we found such skill levels in eligible people for those programs, not that they were going on welfare, but they were eligible too. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing that, we were able to put them to work. I know the county participated in yes, that program. They did. And I think the city of Gaines. Largest was. employer, the county. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. But was it uh, private and public? It was private and public, nonprofits, for profits. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a wide array of businesses. I think we had, um, off the top of my head, about 127 businesses. About a third of them, uh, no, half of the employers actually kept people on after the program ended. Oh, is that right? And about a, a quarter, between a quarter and a third of the people that we put in the program managed to maintain their jobs after the program ended. That's excellent. Yeah, it was really a positive program. We did extremely well in our region, comparable to some of the larger regions in South Florida. We were very proactive, and I have to thank uh, Randy Reed and the county for the tremendous support and help in, mo in mobilizing all of the uh, public agencies in the community and the nonprofits to engage in the program quickly and efficiently. And all the employers were putting up with how hard that program was. <laughs> right. Well, I remember it was quite complicated. It was. And, uh, um, and it was short term and it took a lot of commitment from the community. But well, and certainly the successful. work that you all did was, was commendable. Do you know the numbers? How many people were hired? How much money passed through? Or? Uh, 306 people were hired all together. Um, total salaries to those people was approached $2 million. Wow. Um, we had a lot more available to us and we had 700 jobs available and this is a point that is important for, the, for everyone to realize. The skill levels of the people still and the, abil the ability to match them to the employer was difficult. Right. So even in a time when you have so many people out of work with high levels of education, that doesn't necessarily mean they have the match for the skills that the employers need. And that, um, in, in a six-month period, which was the ex entire length of the program, we only managed to get you know, a little under half of those jobs filled, which was not nearly as much as we had hoped, but certainly better than none. Well, the whole effort was remarkable, particularly considering that six-month yeah. Uh, total time frame. And I will put a plug in. The, it has passed the House at the federal level for continuing that program. The Senate now, um, it sits in their court to see if, if they will uh, extend it. It's not likely. But if they did, that program would come back and continue to um, spur economic growth and company growth and employment and create jobs, which is what our economy needs more than anything. You had some interesting youth programs, I know, in, in this we time did. frame that we're talking about. We did. We had some tremendous um, stimulus-funded um, youth programs. Uh, this last summer, we had about 250 youth in the community, which is about our normal number going through our program. The summer before that, when mm -hmm. the first stimulus money came through, uh, we had 480 youth in both Alachua and Bradford County, and that summer we also managed to create a solar installation technology program in partnership with the Alachua County School Board, held it down at Lofton. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dave Edwards, who's the 
uh, director of career and technical education was instrumental in helping us do that along with some of our local employers. We had um, a great energy auditing program that Santa Fe Community, Santa Fe College uh, ran with us to teach youth about um, energy auditing and carbon bank uh, accounting. We worked with a, a local uh, employer here, the International Carbon Bank Exchange for Carbon Bank Accounting, and they worked on a project for the county, I believe, doing a footprint of the water management system, taught the kids about not only the technology of how to use spreadsheets and work, but they, it was the first time they ever got to work with UF researchers and professors and people um, that are not typically in their realm of you know, exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, we also did a great project in digital media with Santa Fe College where they created several videos of all the different projects and taught kids a lot about communications and media and technology. So it was a great um, program of exposing kids at the highest risk of dropping out, very, very low income, very high barriers in school, and getting them exposed to opportunities and technologies and worlds that they had just never seen before. Well, and hopefully those technologies and those new green kind of jobs will, will start we'll materializing. materializing yeah, yeah. We have some really exciting ones coming up, too. Really? What in the that? youth program, we're um, in the middle of planning right now for a project we're calling Tech Quest, which is going to be a video game-like quest across town two different employers in high-tech fields where the kids go and become exposed to what these new technologies are that are coming out of UF and these inventions and innovations. And they go <coughs> about it in terms of a quest where uh, there are teams and they compete against each other and it's like an across the community six, uh, it's probably going to end up to be about three to four month uh, game or um, engagement. So we're real excited about that. The kids should walk out of it with an iPad or a no notebook. We're still deciding on hardware. Uh -huh. So they get some technology, training how to use it, collaborative skills, team building skills, introduction to technology. We're hoping it really affects their reading scores and their basic fundamental skill levels. And we'll be testing them before and after to see if we can excite them into learning. So we're really excited about that new coming program. A great idea to, to use it in the game format. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you, um, I, I want to get back to what you do on a regular basis. Um, do you have a handle on how many jobs are available in Alachua County, Bradford County at any given time? Do people report those numbers to you? We know, yes we do. Um, and they're actually on the front page of our website on floridaworksonline.com. We have listed the number of jobs in the system and the number of people looking for jobs every month that number is updated. Mm -hmm. And the EmployFlorida.com state web, um, job system, employment system, is the website that you can go to to register yourself as a job seeker or as an employer to post your jobs. Even if you post your jobs on your own website or on CareerBuilder or Monster or any of the other places or in the newspaper digitally, mm -hmm. uh, the EmployFlorida.com system goes and uh, spiders them uh -huh. into and, and aggregates them in. So we do know how many jobs are available at any given point in our community, theoretically. Now, right. it's not a perfect science. Sometimes there's some duplicates and so forth. Right. But relatively speaking, we're pretty close to that number all the time. Right now, we're running in the range of 1,100 to 1,500 to 2,000 on a good month jobs which is up a thousand jobs from what it was, say, a year to a year and a half ago. Well, that's good news. Yes, we are getting more jobs in the system. On the same side, we have roughly 13,000 people unemployed now, whereas we used to have about 4,000. Is that in the two counties? Alachua and Bradford County yeah. combined. Yeah. Of course, the majority of them being in Alachua County. Yeah. But it's uh, a lot more people unemployed and a lot less jobs than we used to have in the past. Um, but it's improving. And it's, a, it's projected to be a slow and steady growth. Florida's actually projected to be, from what I've uh, researched and what we know of, uh, the number one state in the nation in terms of the rate of job growth between now and 2018 at about 3%, which is not a very high job growth. Right. But the whole country is going to be relatively low. And we're, we're leading at 3%. So it's going to be a very gradual very slow recovery, and that's something that people need to uh, come to grips with. 
The jobs that were here before are most likely not coming back. The jobs are shifting and changing to higher skill levels, different skill levels, and there will need to be a retraining or a, a shift of um, focus for job seekers going into the future. And of the 13,000 some odd unemployed people in this area, are, are many people taking advantage of the services you provide? Indeed. Um, we saw last year, I believe, about uh, 31,000 people uh, used our services in some manner. Um, of course, a lot of them were employed, and, and people shift you know, throughout the year. Sometimes they're not, sometimes they are. The 13,000 are the people that are currently on unemployment compensation benefits. So there are more than that actually unemployed that aren't on benefits, that either didn't bother to claim or have um, hardly anybody's gone off since the extensions have been continuing. But yeah, uh, and though that number of you know over 30,000 includes people who just use the computer system. They don't necessarily walk in our doors. Right. But we have a large percentage of the population actively engaged in our processes. Mm -hmm. And um, all of them are, you know, welcome to come in the door. One thing that we talked about a couple of years ago, uh, and I thought I'd get an update, is the Green Ride program. Yeah. Is, is that up and running? And it is. How's it doing? It's doing uh, well. The users are in the about 380. Um, and for the folks at home, can you just give yes. us a quick uh, update on what Green Ride is? Let me see if I can get the floridaworks.greenride.com. I have all my websites memorized. <laughs> Uh, FloridaWorks.GreenRide.com is a website that we have up for ride sharing to help people um, conserve on transportation costs. Uh, we know that it costs usually in the range of three to five thousand dollars a year by the time you include gas, the price of the car, insurance, maintenance, you know, everything related to what it takes to drive if you drive to work 30 miles away. And if you are employed and making, you know, twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand, twenty-eight thousand dollars a year, and you take five thousand dollars off for transportation costs, sometimes it's a barrier so big that people can't take the job. So we've um, are focusing. We have bus passes, gas cards for participants in our program, and the ride sharing is another transportation support that we can give. A lot of people use it who um, are high income you know, earners. It's, it's environmentally, you know, conscious. It's um, cost saving. It's just a great benefit. UF also has a ride sharing system. They use the same one we do mm -hmm. and it's focused on UF staff and uh, students. And then we've opened one up for the rest of the community. Of course, anybody, including UF, sure. um, can use it for Alachua and Bradford County at our um, our website. And there's no cost? No cost. It's service. free. It's, it's secure and confidential. You go in and you put in your contact information. Nobody can get to it. And they can email you in the system only. They don't even know your email address. Mm -hmm. And then you can decide if you want to meet them. Uh, you know, talk. You can communicate back and forth via email or phone number if you want to give them your phone number. Meet in some neutral place. Decide if you want to ride. A lot of people think it's, you know, like, um, strange to, to be riding in a car with someone you don't know. And uh, the point that we make is that it's um, like when you join the Girl Scouts or Cub Scouts and you put your children with people you don't know. Right. I mean, y you're, you're out in the public, you're interacting with people, so it, you have to make your own choices yeah. about when you meet someone if you feel comfortable with being with them. And, and you'll know them soon enough. And you'll know them soon enough. Yeah. And, uh, well. Um, for those that are listening that are considering taking advantage of your services, why don't we kind of uh, mm -hmm. walk down the list? I, I know that you have uh, career counselors and case managers, so uh, I walk in the door. What, what do you do with me? Well, the first thing that we do is um, find out what you want. Mm -hmm. um, there are many reasons why people walk in the door. So if you have specific needs, like you want to apply for unemployment compensation, or you want a job search, or you want to hire someone, uh, we triage you, so to speak, or um, you know, kind of s um, screen you at the front desk mm -hmm. to see what your needs are. Mm -hmm. And then depending on those needs, we will route you to the direct 
the correct uh, place. So for example, if you're an employer, we'll, we'll s refer you to our business services team, and they'll discuss all of the services available to employers in terms of posting their jobs, pre-screening their people, job fairs, all kinds of benefits that employers can get for hiring certain populations, like someone with disabilities or ex-offenders, and the kind of accommodations and bonding and things that are available for those. So we have an array of services for employers. I see. And then for job seekers, we look at Generally speaking, we start with what are you looking to do, uh, what is your education level to determine in which direction to route you. Mm -hmm. If you have a college degree and you're a professional, we'll route you to our Connect Group, which is a weekly gathering of professionals that meet directly with HR directors all over the, co all over the, co the counties, mm -hmm. in both counties, um, for uh, assisting with um, placement. If you need training to get into a specific occupation that you are trying to get into and you're lacking a specific credential or something, then we'll route you into our programs that provide training such as WIA for Workforce Investment Act or, or TANF, um, if you're TANF eligible. Mm -hmm. um, if you simply want to look for a job and maybe need some assistance with your resume or you know, interview skills, or you want a referral to a particular employer, then we'll route you in that direction. We have a resource room there and all kinds of professionals to help you um, just do job matching and connection. So um, it depends on what you need. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was quite an answer. <laughs> Let well, me, so. Serve everybody. <laughs> you know, one of, the, one of the challenges that folks have, I think particularly when they're uh, unemployed and finances are tight is keeping all these resources going like the internet and yeah. computers and all of those things. You all have hands-on rooms where people can go in and, and use that stuff. Yeah, the, we have uh, resource <coughs> rooms in both one-stop career centers mm -hmm. uh, that people can come in and people there to help them go through all of the processes related to the employment services. Also the libraries are great resources, as you know, for computers and we're starting to work much more closely with them now in outreaching and getting our services available in the libraries. That's something that we're going to be expanding this year quite a bit. I noticed that I see your Florida Works banner mm -hmm. uh, around town, so I know you, you do a number of job fairs. We do, all kinds of events. What, do you have good success with those? Or? We do. Um, even in the, the tight economy, we've had some really, um, really successful events. Uh, we had one recently where we had staffing companies, all the different staffing companies in town. Because right now in this economy, a lot of employers aren't hiring themselves full-time positions. They're hiring temporary positions through staffing companies because of the uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to maximize the exposure of the staffing companies to those out of work and with the skills that they need. So we created job fairs to uh, connect mm -hmm. the job seekers to the staffing companies. But we often have job fairs for vets or you know specific um, uh, populations. Mm -hmm. And um, we have other events besides job fairs, often workshops, strategy plans, focus groups, um, of course, committees and board meetings. But uh, those banners are around wherever we are. We've had some great workshops over on campus in the past couple months on entrepreneurial training, um, ideation and creation seminars, and um, uh, marketing feasibility studies, and even SBIR grant writing. And we've had our banners out for those, so we, we get around. <laughs> yeah, well, I would certainly encourage anyone who's looking for work or looking to change jobs to take advantage of your services. You mentioned training. Mm -hmm. you, do you have uh, dollars available, uh, depending on the qualification of the person applying? Yes, um, the dollars that we get from the federal level are um, for training and, and placement services. Mm -hmm. So we put a lot of people in training. Uh, we're focusing in our region on health-related occupations. Makes sense. Uh, we also do focus on green technology training, although jobs are not as plentiful in that area. I, you know, the first to admit that. But we know that from an economic development perspective, if you train the workforce, the business comes. So we are investing in that area for people who are interested in going into those areas, a lot of construction people are moving in that direction, both employed and unemployed. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're focusing on the emerging technologies of biotech, um, 
other areas that we know are the future. And you have partners in those training programs? Or do you we do. do we work yourself? very. No, no. no. The, wor the, f the workforce system does not do training itself by federal law. I see. We work with existing training providers, both, both private and public. Our biggest training provider by far and our closest partner, I say constantly, they really are the heart of our community, is Santa Fe College. Right. They do a tremendous job for us, customizing training to exactly what we need whenever we need it. And I can't uh, begin to speak of how much that improves our services and what a big part of our community and our workforce services that is. In addition to that, we're working more closely with UF all the time, more so now than ever, and um, other training providers in different specific niche areas. You know, we have um, Midwifery School is uh, the, the North Florida Regional, um, now I was on the board of that organization, North Florida. You're doing too many things. Yeah, Angela. too many <laughs> things to keep, keep it all together. It's a board that has to do with midwives. The birth center and uh -huh. the midwifery school here in town. We, uh -huh. we put people through that uh, program. We put people through uh, automotive programs, truck driving programs, you know, different kinds of um, occupations. You also mentioned, um, can you actually apply for unemployment at Florida Works, or do you just help people navigate through that system? You can apply for it at home oh, okay. on the web. Uh -huh. Sometimes people come in and need assistance, and we provide that access and that assistance for them. Um, I know you also do special work with veterans. Um, yes. Can you tell me about that a little bit? We have uh, several staff dedicated to our, our vet population. Jim Mash is our leader in that area, and uh, we focus on um, job matching training programs as well as a lot of recognition and um, community events to um, honor and support our vets. Um, we work with homeless vets, um, people with disabilities, um, everything we can do. Uh, they get priority of service uh, in terms of when training dollars run low. Uh, if, if there are, you know, ten people that come in and we only have funding in certain areas for a couple, then we will, uh, vets get first priority. So um, we're very committed to our vet program. And I have to commend them for becoming one of the top in the state over the past uh, two years. They are, uh, we, we are very metric driven and performance driven and we have specific benchmarks and our vet program is exceeding our benchmarks and excelling in the state every month. So we're very proud of the work they're doing right now. Well certainly helping people find jobs is priority number one across the country and we really appreciate the work you're doing and see you again in two years. All right. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully sooner. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Welcome to your Alachua County Library District, where we're thinking outside the book. What does the library have for you? DVDs, videos, software, music, CDs, and it's free. Wireless hotspots at every branch, all for free. Friendly assistance, online databases, it's also free. And of course, books on every subject, large print and more, all at the best price, free. The library has free research databases with access from home or the library. The Alachua County Library District, thinking outside the book.